sexual intimacy despite uh, he quoted uh, dr gekonyo for example mm. who runs a hospital with his wife um are there potential problems that you are, let me call them challenges that you'd have in a relationship simply because you spend the whole day together Definitely. can you overcome yeah. that yeah it, it's easy to you know once you get into a marriage uh, i guess you're stuck you know you have to do this mm. yeah whatever happens but in a in a relational sort of way when it's still building you would have to be a very strong personality to escape those kind of problems mm -hmm. yeah, because it will happen you know you'll have an argument or somebody else will hit on the other and there'll be a problem and you keep watching over your shoulder and and you know it's just a whole mess of things but once you're married and you're doing something it becomes a partnership the cuners uh, the Gikonyos, you know, you, there are people like that. But right. for them, now it's a lifelong partnership. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it as a matter of business. Yeah, you're not thinking, okay, this might work, this might not work. That's an investment of life and for life. So there's no, there's no two ways about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, David also talked about uh, relationship conflict. <laughs> he mentioned uh, not also, uh, you know, getting a relationship with your neighbor. Somebody said that uh, love your neighbor but don't get caught. Mm -hmm. That's on a um, uh, light note. But he also talked about collusion. Yeah. Um, and, and that's an interesting, uh, you know, uh, conversation because there could also be collusion at the place of mm. work. Yeah, and, and sometimes that's why bosses, you know, board of directors, they get very jittery when they start seeing more than one couple in an office because then you could actually just conspire sometimes even against the organization mm. and just agree, okay, we're going to do this and demand this and, you know, you do it as a force. Mm. Um, the other thing that happens is that it's very easy for someone to engage in vendetta if you know what I mean, you know, like they work together. So if she wants to extract something from you, she'll probably say it loudly in the office or use somebody else, you know, make an offer. And then you're there like, no, I'm going to do this for you. Yeah, so they could easily tagger you all the time, every time they want something, if they're crafty people. And, and that creates a problem for you because then you're living now to meet that need, not spontaneously, but, you know, by way of struggle. Mm -hmm. And so you have to either agree with someone else to do it for you you know like suppose you get to a point where you want to propose and you work together the best place would be to propose in the office so everybody's like whoa okay then whoa. everybody claps for you and <laughs> yeah. you know yeah so that would then be the the, the the optimal point of that relationship but if you propose somewhere in the bunduks and then you come back and tell people next week oh we proposed we're getting married they're like how come we didn't know you know it was supposed to be a surprise but then yeah at least tell one or two guys yeah. in the office yeah so then guys in the office will also sometimes either deliberately or without thinking about it start giving you problems mm. you know, as a couple and, yeah. and there are offices that have uh, rules you mm. know on you know the the line the red line relationships, yeah. relationships don't do this do this uh, or you know just are silent about the whole mm. thing mm. do you think it's necessary that organizations need especially the big ones need to be yeah. very clear and come out and say okay we we're clear about this. No, it is. It is. It's yeah. very, very useful because when you go to work, uh, the idea is that you must maintain a certain level of, you know, um, detachment and professionalism. Yeah. And the minute you go into a relationship, relationship, especially if you're in the same department, you know, sometimes the work won't get done or if it gets done, it's sloppy or you don't deliver on time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, sometimes you carry it home and you start discussing office matters in the house and maybe you have visitors, things happen and people get to know, mm -hmm. which is what's not supposed to happen. Not so most office um, uh, executives are very uneasy with, with office relationships for a variety of reasons, you know, including the fact that when you do that, when you relate in the office, it would affect the corporate image of that organization mm. if it becomes very obvious that, you know, this is like a fertile breeding ground <laughs> for couples. <laughs> yeah, so then they start thinking, what's happening at KTN? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so um, people have to be very cautious about that. In terms of policy, you know, um, um, they are strict rules mm. that govern even if you are in that relationship there are strict rules that govern your behavior and like your conduct mm. right you know like being told you cannot for example have a fight in the office even though you can't help it but sometimes you do yeah. and you're also not supposed to bring your like your children and stuff to the office and the main rule i know for a fact is that you mm. must never express emotion in the office mm. so you could be relating the office might say okay you're human beings we can't stop you but then you're told you know what don't start doing the biscuits and flowers thing here yeah mm -hmm. because then we need to work here and other people need to concentrate mm -hmm. yeah and so you don't want to present those kind of challenges to an, an organization because they'll lose you mm -hmm. they'll just get rid of one of you or both of you, oh, both and, of you. and uh, maybe for anybody who might 
be seeing like they're getting into an office relationship what's the conversation they should be having between the two of them to avoid some of these potential challenges or to avoid a situation where you it goes full blown then suddenly you have like the lady was saying we think okay it's boring mm. or suddenly you realize that our emotions are spilling over to our places of work maybe right from the beginning of the relationship to have this conversation so that you're aware if we get to this level then mm. maybe one of us may have to look for a different for the sake to a of corporate place. equilibrium one of the the best things to do is keep it under wraps for as long as possible mm -hmm. yeah so your colleagues wouldn't know your bosses wouldn't know until such a time that now you can't help it like either she gets pregnant or you have to get married and yeah, you know, do stuff mm -hmm. so then you'd have to come clean and say hey this has happened between us and one of us is either going to leave or even to another department or we are getting married and so we have to do this but um m most times if you declare it right from day one because people in the office are also not foolish you know they look at the two of you and they can tell body language mm -hmm. you know they can tell facial expressions mm -hmm. yeah and and sometimes now the biggest problem is when for example a client calls you like you work in a bank I said earlier, you have a, you're a favorite teller to some very rich client. He's always coming to your, your booth. And so your, your habit to be is right behind you, probably clearing the checks. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, you start having a problem because he says, tell that guy to go to the next counter, right. <laughs> you know, which he can't do because he's also a very good client of the I bank. Know, right? so, yeah. yeah, so the, the manager will be like, eh, hey, hey, you know, <laughs> what yeah. you have doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. It's that client who matters to me. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so you, you have to really keep, keep a lead on yeah. these things. Yeah. And you mentioned at the beginning that most of these relationships that are witnessed in the office are casual. Mm. It's the clan day type. Why is it that they become so prevalent? Are you having more and more people in this kind of situations it's friends with benefits it's mm. you have that person in the office and you even hear some men saying you know what it eventually works out to ensure my marriage is okay yes. because then you know you I can talk to this other those. person mm -hmm. in the office yeah. better you know there's no emotions attached or we can have this and yeah it just works out for the bigger picture some mm. claim. The, the reason most of those things are uh, clandestine is because you have like you just said that opportunity yeah, she's right there, you, the guy's right there, and it's very easy. Oh, we work together. You know, it's very easy to explain. Mm. Even if you're found at lunch, you're found whatever. And that's why a lot of the guys we found out were, who were doing it were married people, not, not single. Mm -hmm. It would be a clandestine in the sense that you have a spouse, but in the office, perfect excuse. Even if the guy drops you to your gate, he says, oh, together. yeah, you yeah, needed a lift. It was going yeah. this way, yeah. Yeah. you know? And, and so it's very easy and convenient for a lot of people to do that. And the other thing about the office is that it provides you with a shield. It's like, it kind of, um, what's the word? Um, it immunizes you mm. Mm -hmm. against whatever else might happen out there. And if you look at married women in particular, um, one of the things I found out, and I keep saying this, that women don't just cheat. You know, a lot of times men are like, oh, women are so conniving. But they don't just cheat unless they have to. Yeah, a woman who has in, been in a marriage will then start thinking, okay, romantic malnutrition. My husband never takes me out for lunch. He never takes me for dinner. Then, then there's this guy at work who, for lack of better things to do, says, why don't we have lunch together? Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's doing it so well. And, you know, being such a gentleman, then she starts comparing and thinking, hey, when was the last time my hubby even pulled a chair for me in a restaurant? Right. Open the door. <laughs> yeah, you know? And, and so then she gets literally carried away. But she's safe because we work together. And she's seeing the guy there, they slip notes to each other, you know, sometimes emails and stuff. Mm. And when she gets home, she's like, hey, I'm home now, my hubby, you know? That's mm. the end of the story. Mm. But if you were out there, then the guy would also be waiting to see you in the evening, and then there's no time, you know, to, to do these things and still get home in, in good time. So the office is a perfect, perfect excuse yeah. you know, for and I guess also people. for the for the clandestine scenario, I mean, uh, this is somebody who you work with, mm. so maybe if you have beef at home and your mood is just not right, it becomes an easy release valve. Oh, yes. What's going oh, on? Yes. Now, you know, I had a fight with the wife or mm. with my husband, and mm. you open up to them, and of course that now becomes an avenue for, for growth of a yeah, relationship. Yeah, there, there are those genuine guys in the office. Mm. Again, back to music, there's a song called Splacaveli. You listen this, to a lot of this music. This guy says, <laughs> I'm not your husband, I'm not your boyfriend, but right. I'm there for you. You know that wow. kind of guy? Very few African men are like that, but, <laughs> no. you know, because they want benefits. <laughs> but you know that guy in the office who will sit there, he knows you have a boyfriend, he knows you have a husband, but he's just there for you. Mm -hmm. Anytime you have issues, hey, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know? He'll even take you out for lunch just for you to, yeah, yes, yes, just no, to no, listen to you. Vent, talk, and, yeah. and he gives you that opportunity to mm -hmm. pour it all out. That's the perfect man in the office. Right. Because then he'll be there to just lift you up from all that mess that you came from in the morning. And sometimes, in the sense of optimism, you might be fighting with your hubby the whole night, but you're looking forward to seeing Michael 
at the office in the morning because mm -hmm. when you get there it's like hey you know what's up you look really good let's mm -hmm. go have tea mm -hmm. and you drop that razzmatazz of the husband you know for the time that you're in the mm -hmm. office so by the time you get back home you kind of get insulated that's the word i was looking for mm -hmm. when you get home your husband will be talking but you're just remembering what michael said during the day mm -hmm. you know because you have, you have this happy feeling in you yes. that you don't want ruined and that's it. what works for quite a number of people and by the way mm -hmm. if you're just joining us i realize you don't have the tag uh, relationships at work we're not mm -hmm. just talking about relationships but it's in the workplace so our numbers have taken over that tag mm -hmm. but it's at the workplace and getting to understand that better because it is interesting that you see people like we did our survey and it was interesting to find that 90 percent of the people have had a uh, thing which he's already said it is true that it's mm. not usually a formal boyfriend girlfriend it's just right. that side uh kind of a hassle and yeah. yes uh, just to um further that point in terms of that is happening and the social space being mm. the place of work because i mean there's there's so much contact uh there's also there like you, you had said earlier there's the opportunity for you there's the breaking ice which yeah. which by the way i think is normally the most stressful part for it's most difficult. relationships uh, to yeah. start off but it gives you a perfect when you're in the platform all oh, that works for you because yeah. she'll come and say hey i've been given some work here let's do it together right. that's where it starts for you yeah. so she's broken the ice for you yeah. and vice versa but you know I, I guess the two of you have to be polite because of your your job but one of the other things we found out <laughs> during the relationship <laughs> Okay. Is, is sex in the office you know that that these guys who do these things then oh, now I'm move beyond <laughs> relationships in the <laughs> office they start having you know those funny things happening in the office and and so then you have a, a, a real problem uh, both for security both for the bosses both for the colleagues you right. know because then when you graduate it especially if it's a clande one mm -hmm. everything ends in the office you know right. so as guys go you say oh we're working late you know and you end up working late on each other you know so uh, you, you start having <laughs> on each other's of, tables yes, yes. <laughs> so, so these these office relationships might also have those kind of problems because then security the next day gossip right. well, you know they were left in the office they left at eight and you know yeah, they were, we're just and hearing and some boxes yeah and yeah and with so cctv nowadays i mean they could be you a have issues yeah, yeah yeah so these days again with yeah with that you kind of security careful. thing you have to be very cautious what do you tell though somebody you're in the office and you're attracted to this person you're thinking wow and then you don't know how to tell them to communicate i mean because mm -hmm. we're not demonizing relationships at work yeah right? you know we're just giving trying to give both sides of the story analyze what are the good and the bad so if there's this person watching and they're like i've fallen for this guy or girl and i need them to know how i feel like it's mm. killing me you know for ice break uh, which is like i said stage actually stage two you don't even say stage one is sighting seeing the person yeah. mm -hmm. and saying okay that's the and one like, i like then now you start go working on ice break now when you get to ice break the office makes it so easy mm -hmm. for you because the first advantage which you have over everybody else who's not working together is that you shall see her every day she's coming to work in the morning you're sure of that you know where to yeah. find her so yeah <laughs> the difficult part with icebreak is you bump into each other and then you're yeah. like so where do you work then she probably lies to you says this building you know but she works right across yes. so every day you're hanging around that building you never see her yes, yeah. yeah or maybe you meet somewhere regularly like church but that's once a week mm. you know so but in the office you know for a fact in the morning and then the other thing it does psychologically there's a guy called calvin who says that for the for the mind of the office lover it brings out the best in you you oh. dress you you dress the part you behave the part you want you, to like get really those awards in the deliver. office you yes, to deliver. You know? yeah. so so those office relationships might also have you know a, a confidence boost in a person and the, the the boss will probably see the benefits even though he didn't like the idea in the first place mm -hmm. but this guy suddenly becomes workaholic you know he right. has to do all these things because he has seen somebody he likes in that mm. office before he was just one of those drug abouts you know who walk around yeah. but then the day you employ this hotshot girl new list of life <laughs> oh yes the guy <laughs> delivers on everything he's yeah. well groomed yeah. and everything yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. okay well that's an interesting conversation to have and mm. uh thank you so much ken uh for those wonderful uh insights uh, but maybe as we summarize um what are the key things that one must look out for uh, so that you know that this relationship has developed and has gone beyond just the office and since it has developed i need to step back and either have the conversation or be aware of what might happen at mm. what point does it actually tilt mm. the key one is time spent outside the office yeah that that is the first indicator if you're able to go out for those weekends you know spend time either at your place or at her place then you begin to know this is serious because a lot of people and that's why we said 72 percent were actually those clander things where it's just casual it's in the office it ends there mm. once you go home you see each other the next day but the minute you start carrying it forward and maybe once you're at home separately you're 
conversing, you're chatting, social media these days makes it so easy. Mm -hmm. And then you realize, oh, oh, this is now getting to where it ought to be. The second thing is usually the subject matter of your interactions. Right. That when you're together, a lot of times, if it's nothing serious, half the time you're just discussing content on TV. You know, you're seeing something has not been written where it's supposed to be written. But the minute you start now saying, okay, today in the office, you know, let's leave that story. Now let's talk about my shoes. They were really pinching me. And then, you know, the time that you removed them from me and kept them aside, then you know something is changing. Because as soon as then you start creating that opportunity where mm -hmm. you share personal stuff, and not official business then you know definitely you're heading the right direction but the final one is that if you look at yourself and you realize that your reaction to her or to him in the office is changing from what it used to be because sometimes it's always nonchalant that okay he has come to work so therefore okay if i see him i see him if i don't i don't but the minute you start thinking okay i'm looking forward to that then you see them in the morning and you're like hmm you're dressed badly today. You know, then you know that you're, you're so now going down, down that road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, going down yeah. that road. Okay. All right, uh, I guess uh, time is up, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you also, Sophia, for joining us. I know she was not supposed to be here. It actually turned out to be, be an interview, <laughs> or as opposed to what you had intended for, yes. <laughs> for it to be, but hey, it's all good. Yeah. Thank you, Ken. That was Karibu great. Yeah, so we'll now wind it up right there, and mm -hmm. thank you so very much for being with us right here on the Morning Express. But do remember to uh, join us uh, tomorrow. Yes. Because uh, tomorrow we'll be looking at the state of the nation. Yes, we're on state of the nation. Tomorrow we'll be analyzing, discussing some of those uh, big stories we've been covering uh, the past few days. We'll have our panel here uh, all set to put Kenya sent and uh, sent and hmm? focus. <laughs> the focus is yes, square. <laughs> sent and square. My yeah. world. It has been three hours. Yes, <laughs> it's been television. a long three hours. <laughs> and tomorrow we'll also be working out. So please get your gear ready. Tomorrow yes. is Fitness Thursday, and uh, we'll also be giving you some health tips and how you can stay fit and healthy. Yeah, and he's been doing great. He now joins me sometimes for workouts. May I report <laughs> that? Uh, and I know there are some people at least on my Twitter that follow me that are really usually excited about our workouts. So get ready. Tomorrow we are on uh, for about half hour. We'll be working out. So should be having some um, Taibo, uh, I believe, uh, as well. And uh, more lower body workouts which are good for your glutes, your legs. We want you to look good. Streamlining. Yes, definitely. So that's Morning Express tomorrow. But for now, we'd like to say a very good uh, goodbye and wish you all a fantastic, <laughs> fantastic day and enjoy the rest of your viewing. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. I'm Sophia Wanuna. Have a lovely day.